So today we're looking at a compact fixed blade that has the potential to be just as home in the backcountry as it is in the urban jungle. That's right, we're taking a look today at the Topps Knives C-A-T Cat. And the reason I went out and purchased this fixed blade is to answer one specific question. Could I carry a compact fixed blade around town as well as in the backcountry when I hit local trails and go hiking or camping? And this particular design seemed to fit the bill. It was lightweight, comes with a polymer sheath with a lot of mounting options, and it's compact enough but still has enough size for it to fill out my hand well and give me some good real estate on the blade length so that it's larger than a neck knife, which you guys know I am not a fan of, but compact enough so that it can ride underneath your clothing, concealed, and use it when you need to. All right, here we are with the biz nos end of the blade. Now, this knife has two options. You can get the drop point like you see here, or you can get a Tanto version. So depending on how you think you're gonna deploy the blade, what you connect with, it's cool that they give you two blade options, depending really just on your feel and how you're gonna deploy it. Now, what you're looking at is 1095 high carbon steel, Rockwell 56 to 58. Topps has been doing that for years. They are well, very familiar with it. I've never had issues with Topps 1095. It holds an edge well. It is, it will, it is prone to rust, so that is something to consider what environment you're in. Um, you know, is that something that's okay? You know, it tends to be very tough, not chippy, which is good, um, but compared to maybe rust resistance, that may be a you know, drawback. And consider that these knives tend to, the size of knife, tends to be close to your person. So there is a tendency for sweat, higher humidity. Just take that into consideration when you are considering a, a compact fixed blade. Now, the overall blade length from this handle scale to tip is three and a quarter. Actual cutting edge is three inches even. It does have a saber grind that goes up about two thirds of the way. And then it does have that full tank construction at 0 0.16. So that is stout. Um, an eighth of an inch would be more slicey, but then you would retract from the durability. And if we're going all out and getting a fixed blade to compact carry and possibly everyday carry, might as well go stout, right? I mean, I have some folders that are about 0.16 and yeah, they're not quite as slicey. They're not razor blades, you know, but they are uh, very tough, durable. And the nice thing about this blade is that you can probably see it on screen, definitely in the performance as you're seeing, it has a good, good relief edge with that nice belly. It's a slicer. For how thick it is, it can slice really well. They did do the they did the geometry on the blade very nicely and brought the relief edge up rather well so that there is a good amount of slicing capability on the blade so that you can go through a lot of material regardless if it's like cardboard boxes and those type of things or rubber. You can't even do some food prep without too much difficulty because it's not like 3 sixteenths or a quarter inch, which would be way overkill in my opinion for this design. But in that regard, it's gonna be very tough, very durable, still good for carving and whittling and outdoor tasks as well as for stuff around the home, around the, the um, backyard, you know, your property, you know, those type of things. You're gonna get durability without losing all of the slicey capability that you want in a compact knife like this. The tip is nice and durable with a very minor swedge right there as well. Very cool. Now, something lastly to speak on, these, some people, I always wondered what these cut-ins are. It's based off of Morse code. I can't, I was looking at Morse code and I couldn't figure out what it meant. I don't think it means SOS. It might be like part of that or something like that. Uh, um, maybe somebody can tell me what these cut-ins, when you look, think of it through SOS um, and Morse code, or excuse me, through Morse code, what that means. Um, but that's what these cut-ins are for. And that's what Tops kind of, when they first were getting started, they did that on a lot of knives. And this is a design that's been around a very long time. That's why that is there. It does not retract in any way from the strength of the knife, particularly at this size, what you would be putting it through. It doesn't take away from its strength and durability. All right, folks, let's go ahead and hit the sheath here with you. Now, a knife with the concept of it being an everyday carry fixed blade that you can carry on your person underneath your jacket or clothing all the time, it needs to have a good sheath right out of the box. There doesn't need to be a lot of modification going into it. It should be easy to deploy and then put back in. And I think Topps has done that well with this Kydex sheath. Now, it's a loop over pancake design, which is really nice. Now, on one side, we have their 360 degrees rotatable pocket clip 
So you can rotate it in any canter, you can wear it uh, scout style, all sorts of different ways that you would like to do it. You can kind of get the canter and angle that you would like. Now you can carry it either outside of the belt or you can put it if you're a lefty on the inside of the belt. So righties or lefties, even though it's only mounted on the um, left side of the, the sheath, it is an ambidextrous carry. You would just, if you're a lefty, carry it inside your belt basically instead of outside of the belt. So it's just something to kind of consider there and that would actually even make it slimmer and sleeker. Now the belt clip is removable. It does have a screw in there if you did want to completely remove it. And then there are the lashing holes right there that you could modify and try and do like a blade tech lock or maybe some other sort of clip that you would want to modify if you did want to do that. There are some capabilities there. So that's all good and it is very sleek and slim as we've been talking about, which is really, really important. It's easy to put on your belt, easy to take off. And that clip can also be modified to put onto most shoulder straps of backpacks not modified, you can just put it there. Um, and it can even fit through certain widths of PALS webbing, not all PALS webbing because it's a little wide, but some it will absolutely fit through. Now the second aspect is deployment. How does it deploy? Now, if you do it in a natural hammer grip, I've actually discovered if you put your three fingers on the backside and put your index finger on the kydex, when you pull it out, it makes it very natural and you're locked in ready to rock and roll. And then it's very easy to slide back in, pull back out. So you just grab, pull and it makes it a very quick natural grip and you're ready to rock and roll you don't have to do any sort of walk up or anything like that particularly if you're thinking about this as a fast deploying maybe you're buying the ta the tanto version something like that it's a little trickier if you're trying to do a reverse grip it can be done but just not quite as natural as the natural hammer grip but same concept you just put your three fingers you let your pinky rest on the kydex and when it's deployed your pinky naturally will fall into that last groove to be able to be deployed very quickly. So that's a really good positive. The retention is great. It's silent. It's not going to rattle, not going to come out if you were to carry it upside down. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and hit price here with you. I paid $80 for this tool, and that's about the going rate for this design. There's lots of color combinations. There's also the Tom Brown tracker that we talked about that's a little bit thicker handle scales. That one is about the same price, maybe a little bit cheaper, um, so you can look into that as well, but about $80. And when you look at what else is on the market, you know, from SE and KVAR and, you know, other companies like that, USA Made, 1095, Kydex Sheath, all the contouring and G10 and all that, this is about the average right down the middle um, price point for you. So we'll have links for you below over to GP Nice, Blade HQ, Amazon, uh, as well as a lot of the other you know, sites uh, that we have. All right, let's talk about this very unique handle. Some of you will either super connect with it and you'll love it or you won't. And I think that will be the determining factor of this knife. Now, what you're looking at is a four inch overall handle. Uh, this is G10. This was actually an accident, apparently, uh, when they originally came up with this kind of like target pattern uh, that you see there. And they decided to stick with it when they were um, updating the design a few years ago. And so now you can get it with this black and red G10. You can get it with, I think, all black. You can get it with uh, micarta, tan. They now have this a knife as well with uh, G10 tech scales, I think. Uh, or they have a version, and I believe it's under the name the Tom Brown um, Scout. And that is just contoured rounded micarta that is thicker. So uh, if you're looking for more of a beefy um, feel to the handle and you want it to fill out your hand more, they do have an option for that if you're considering using this more in the outdoors. I purchased this to be used more in the outdoors if I need to for some quick utility and some you know quick carving or whatever, not as a bushcraft knife, just more as a quick, um, quick knife, but more as a concealed fixed blade um, on my person for everyday carry around town. So I wanted it to be the slimmer version. So uh, four inches, as I said, and then the thickness here is gonna be at about, from what I can measure, because my caliper's kind of messed up right, right now and, and uh, out of battery life. Uh, from what I can measure, it's about 0 0.45. Uh, right at about half an inch thick. And just to give you some perspective, I do have a Spyderco Sage 5 here. And that thing, and they're about the same thickness. The tops is just like a micron thicker. So uh, just to give you some perspective there, think of like a lot of Spyderco pocket knives. It's about that thick on the handle. But the nice thing is that the contouring is really well done. So it is flat on the sides with some concaving because of that little target pattern. 
Um, the screws are half recessed in. They do protrude ever so slightly from the outer part of the handle. The G10 is a very warm feel. You do have a lanyard hole back there. Now I wear large size gloves, so I wasn't sure when I bought it, is it gonna fit? It absolutely fits my hand just perfectly. Uh, much larger and it would not, if you probably had double X size gloves, this would definitely not be big enough for you. The cut-ins all fit perfectly. Now they do have sharp jimping there. Uh, so when I put my finger right here, if I'm doing like a push hard cut and I rest my thumb right there, you definitely feel that jimping. Uh, what I've tended to do with this little hump right here is either I rest my thumb over it and then that gives me control over the tip very nicely. I either can use a hammer grip just like this when I'm doing a feather stick, or if I'm doing more of a precision cut, then I put it on the thumb ramp back there. This little hump does not get in the way. I've had it actually on one or two other Tops knives and it, it, it's not a factor. For some people, it absolutely will. I'm not gonna pretend that this is like a more a heavy duty companion. It's designed perfectly for everyone's hand and there's not a zero hot spot on it. Some people, you'll really like the feel and the grip that it gives you. Some people, you will hate it. So if you're kind of on the fence with the, the grip, know that a large size hand fit fine uh, because I was thinking of it in this form of basically like the thinness of a pocket knife, but this is a fixed blade. So think of a pocket knife, but it's a fixed blade and it has these contours and these angles. That's what you're getting. So it's not something that you're going to sit there and carve a bowl and a spoon out with. It's not designed for that. Again, look at the Tom Brown Scout, I believe, um, or it might just be the cat and just a different model number with the, the more fatter contoured handles. Um, so that's something to consider. For me, I haven't experienced any issues in the hand and because of how slim it is, I can carry it under my person and it's, it's doing the job that I'm looking for it to do as a, a quick access fixed blade that I can use for a lot of utility purposes um, or for quick outdoor purposes as well for carving and whittling and feather stick making. Uh, I can't even get it in a reverse grip and do some reverse cuts and it wasn't an issue for me. So uh, it does fit the need that I have because I knew the expectation of I'm wanting something that is slimmer. It's not gonna fill out my hand as much as a lot of other fixed blades would, um, but I, I am willing to sacrifice some of those aspects of ergonomics for how slim and concealable the tool is. Well, folks, as we wrap it up and bring it to a close, I just want to run in my SE Azula 2 for almost the exact same footprint. You can get a knife with more traction, uh, more grip, if you will, and a larger blade, longer blade. So if that's something that you're in the market for when you are looking for a compact either EDC or just outdoor knife, then the cat definitely has a lot going on. And it will have almost the exact same thickness profile as an Azula 2. So you're kind of getting more in the sense of traction, some grip capability, but also blade length than what you're gonna expect on the Azula 2 and a lot of other more neck knife style blades with this Topps cat. And so for me guys, I really do believe that this cat has filled a little gap that I was looking for. Now, nine out of 10 times, I'm still gonna be carrying my pocket knife, but there are gonna be moments where a fixed blade just makes more sense depending on what I'm doing that day. Or maybe for some of you, that's just what you wanna carry all the time regardless. So I believe that if you haven't taken a look at the Topps Cat, I think it's something that you should consider looking at, uh, testing out and seeing if it might fit a niche for you as well particularly for urban environments. So thanks guys so much for coming over today. I hope this has answered some of your questions and giving you some food for thought and just pointing you in the right direction and give you the data that you need so that you can make a wise choice when you're looking for that compact uh, blade. So with that, uh, check us out as well on all the social media because we've got content going up there all the time. You can check out the other video popping up. Subscribe if you're not a current subscriber. I invite you to become part of the GT family. And finally, guys, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and we'll see you out there.